Hello, everybody. Um, this is the FS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about tomorrow's two game slate on the FS um, for the League of Legends MSI tournament slate. Um, it's today is May 3rd. Tomorrow we have these four winners of their uh, respective games. Um, going at against each other and the winners of these two games um the respective winners two teams basically from these games will be qualifying for the main stage so this is a huge game uh, for all of these four teams um so yeah without any further ado let's dive in um but before we go there let's uh let's have you please hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel if you can. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, GG versus BLG. Um, I just want to kind of pull up the roster and maybe the results from last game, and I kind of want to share my thoughts, and then I'll share my prediction. Um, this video will be shorter than usual because I thought about doing the usual analysis using the metrics and all that, but, you know, at this point, I think my um, eye test is a lot more important because we're kind of in that funky state or funky position at the moment because we cannot use the one game sample size from yesterday and two days ago because that's such a skewed and small sample size and it was very much largely dictated dictated by the opponent that they played against and then we cannot go all the way back and look at their regular season or sp spring playoff uh, stats or metrics like we did before, because really like some of these teams have played completely differently, uh, you know, in contrast to those times that I'm talking about, like they have put in a lot of work and effort to prepare for these uh, types of matchups, especially the one that they just played in. Uh, but now, you know, throughout the tournament, they're going to adapt and make different adjustments. And obviously the picks and bands have been a whole lot different compared to what they're used to in the summer uh, spring split and all that as well. So a lot of different factors coming into play. And those are the reasons why I think it's better to kind of just talk about what I saw um, in those games that they played in, uh, you know, in the last couple of days and kind of share my thoughts that way. All right. So GG versus BLG is the first one. You saw BLG just uh, rolling over Movie Star today. Um, and then you saw Golden Guardians, um, you know, winning that matchup as well um, over GAM, GAM Esports, which I was very shocked by the fact that Golden Guardians played very well and very clean, most importantly. Um, and then we have PSG against G2, uh, where G2, you know, pretty much rolled over Team Loud um, from Brazil. And then PSG um, played very well and beat uh, Detonation Focus Me from LJL in Japan um, pretty handedly. So... These four are the clear winners from their matchups. Um, I think G2 was a little bit shaky in game one, and then PSG was a little get shaky in game two of their matchup, um, and then BLG was dominant, and Golden Guardians, in my opinion, was dominant You know, throughout those two games that they played in, in the series today. So yeah, clear winners. Um, so I just want to maybe talk about the players of these teams. So let's go there. Maybe this is the best way to do it here. So let's talk about the clear prediction um, here between Golden Guardians and BLG. Um, I was down on Golden Guardians, to be honest with you. Um, if you are in the True DFS Discord channel, you saw me picking game esports. Um, I, I, I'm here to say I was wrong about game esports. Um, maybe it was just a bad series, bad matchup you know, against Gold, Golden Guardians, you know, who knows? I think there's a good chance that Golden Guardians will be playing against GAM Esports again in the loser's bracket if they lose this. Um, and I think I'm still going to stick with GAM Esports in that one, I think. It's going to be hard for Golden Guardians to win two in a row. But 
we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But today we're talking about BLG, the LPL team versus the LCS team in Golden Guardians. Um, I mean, clear prediction here. I think BLG is going to win. Um, now, I guess from the DFS angle, um, I guess, you know, what is the kill upside going to be? And that same question was posed this morning about BLG versus Movistar, whether BLG is just going to roll them over um, against Movistar. They did, but they also produced a lot of kills in, in doing so. Um, now, is the same thing going to happen here against Golden Guardians? Um, I think so. Um, but at the same time, it's a little different here because Movistar likes to fight and their CKPM was a little, well, that was significantly higher than Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians is a team, as an LCS team that likes to play a little more conservatively and a little more slowly um, compared to, let's say, Movistar type of teams, you know, foreign teams. So <clears throat> I do think Golden Guardians lower CKPM is going to reduce the kill upside of BLG or the winner of this matchup. Um, yeah, so I mean, main, lane by lane, I mean, I don't need to go in any further. I mean, Ben's better than Lic Licorice, um, June is better than River, yeah, Gao is better than Gory. Although Gory played really well, I thought he was the player of the match or player of the series. Um, and Golden Guardians impressive win this morning. Um, so the mid lane is gonna be the key matchup to to watch, I think, in my opinion. Um, I think Yagao is going to be more than capable of handling Gori, um, even Gore, even if Gori is in good form. Um, Elk was amazing for BLG, um, at least from the DFS standpoint, Elk scored very well. Um, I think he's going to do well against Six Stixe, and then On versus Huhi. I think at the bottom lane should favor BLG. Um, Jungle should favor BLG. Top lane should favor BLG. Um, although Licorice, Licorice played okay, um, but I think there's a huge, huge gap still, you know, between Bin and Licorice. Um, and then, like I said, mid lane is the one to watch. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think BLG is going to win two to zero. Um, they might troll a little bit, fool around, and maybe give up one game, but ultimately, I mean, BLG should win. Um, in the best of three series, um, I think the kill upside is going to be pretty good, but not as good as it was this morning. Um, I think BLG likes to rack up a lot of kills in doing so and, you know, trying to have fun at this point in the tournament. Um, but Golden Guardians may kind of scale back and kind of just let BLG slowly <laughs> destroy them which is a painful way of dying, pain, painful way of giving up their season or their chances in the tournament. But I really do think Golden Guardians is going to play a little more conservatively against BLG, knowing that they're not matched up uh, skill-wise, you know, in a, each individual lane. They're just going to have to kind of, you know, maybe sit back and wait for BLG to make a mistake which BLG has done, you know, previously in the spring split. We talked about, you know, during the LPL season that BLG made some dumb mistakes. And I think it was the midpoint in the season, in the spring split rather, um, that BLG tended to make some stupid mistakes that, you know, have cost them the game, like in, in, in the LPL. And that could happen in this series. I mean, I could maybe see Golden Guardians take a game, um, but having them picking them win two games in the series. I just don't think that's going to happen. So I'm going to have a lot of share of BLG. Um, now in terms of the question uh, for uh, long stack versus short stack using BLG players, you know, I am inclined to use them as a short stack just because BLG is going to be so, so popular um, so we'll see what happens there. And any of these guys for BLG really is going to score well. Um, like I said, lane-wise, matchup-wise, they they match up very well. Uh, now Ben, 31.9% um, kill participation, being a top laner. I mean, that concerns me a lot. So maybe Ben is the last priority for me. But there were there there have been some games, as you know, in the LPL where Ben carries and he racks up a lot of kills. 
but I just don't think that's the type of the meta that we're in where top laners carry and just carry the game all the way. Uh, I still think that Elk and Yagao and even June, um, the jungler, um, will probably score much better than Ben in nine out of 10 times. So that's my prediction. And those are the players that I'm going to focus on. So yeah, without um, speaking any further about this matchup, let's go into the more intriguing matchup and more even matchup between G2 versus PSG. So as you know, G2 is from the LEC in Europe, and then PSG um, is from Hong Kong, I think, maybe PCS. Yeah, PCS. So um, PSG was very dominant um, in their region, and then obviously G2 struggled recently. Um, in in the spring split playoffs or even in the spring split. Um, as you guys uh, probably heard me saying this in the last video, but LEC had a different type of a C, uh, spring split slash they had two splits basically within the spring split, right? So I think that, um, you know, kind of worked out in favor of G2 because G2's recent form, you know, had been really bad, but... In their last series against um, Team Loud, G2 struggled, like, let's say, in the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes of that game, game one against Team Loud. But after that, I mean, really, G2 kind of looked like that they their form was coming back. Um, I think it was more of a confidence issue and kind of communication issue among the team members. Um, and engaging at the same time, trying to make the same plays and just being aligned on the same team strategy uh, that they're trying to execute. Um, so I do think G2's form is coming back and maybe it was a blessing in disguise that they you know, went up against a team like Team Loud that likes to skirmish and likes to kind of force their own issues and in starting initiating team fights and G2 actually bounce back um, you know, from their struggle, like I said, in the early part of that game one and the latter part of game one and game two at the entirety of it, um, G2 was very dominant. So I like G2's chances here. Uh, my prediction here between PSG and G2 is that G2 is going to roll over PSG. Um, in my opinion, Broken Blade was the best player and then Yike was very close to sharing that honor, um, being the best player in that series between Broken Blade and Yike. I mean, G2 was very, very good. And I do think they're going to cause a lot of issues again, uh, for Aji and then Junja. Um, Junja actually played okay. I think he played, you know, very well individually, but he just did not help his teammates as much as I thought he would. Um, his individual performance was good, but his map pressure on the map, um, you know, gaining vision and gaining uh, uh, and, and putting pressure on, you know, in the um, in the areas of the map where his laners, you know, his teammates could benefit from. He just did not do a very good job, in my opinion, is in securing that kind of vision and pressure um, for his teammates. And I think that's a big issue, in my opinion. Um, because that really had has had negative impact um, for Ubao and then for Aji in the top lane. I think top half of the matchup, uh, uh, matchup, you know, went well overall, but at the same time, I saw a lot of issues that I feel like G2 could exploit, especially given how well Broken Blade and Yike um, have played or they played in, the, in that last series against Team Loud. Um, I think they are more than capable of exploiting it, especially in the top lane. I think that's a huge, huge mismatch. Um, I think Broken Blade is going to play very, very well um, in that top lane. Now, in the mid lane is an interesting one. I thought Yubao would struggle against um, Arya for DFM, um, but Yubao actually played pretty well. I think he showed that he, he belongs at this level. Um, now he's going up against Caps, who has been struggling to say the least. And then he pulls off this Nautilus pick in the mid lane. 
which was a very you know big big surprise. But then you see Yagao, you saw Yagao for BLG do the exact same thing in the mid lane, and you know shout out to Doin B who pulled that off before, and now these guys are kind of copying him and all that. But you know I digress. And Caps, I think he he showed that he can be one of the best mid laners in 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 this tournament if 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 he wants to be and if he can be. And if he communicates well and meshes well with his jungler, like in game two against Team Loud, yeah, I mean, Caps was very good. Um, he was very good, but then he's not playing any Assassin Champions, really. Like at the, at the, at, I mean, and if you watch, if you look at his recent game history, um, so maybe that's his way of trying to like get out of his funk, um, trying to get out of his like struggles and slump rather. Um, but, I just don't like it from the DFS standpoint, right? Like I think from the gaming macro game standpoint, like helping his team win. Yeah. I mean, I think it can help maybe like with some additional CCs and more of a utility and support champions that can help um, the rest of his teammates to be able to carry the team um, instead of him who has been struggling um, and, and help the team win. So I, I get the point, but from DFS standpoint, I think that could be a struggle uh, against Yubao, who showed that, you know, he can play as well. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I think that's more of an even matchup there. Um, whereas, like I said, um, G2 should be favored, I think, in the top and maybe in the jungle. I think Junja is a very good player individually. But like I said, I was very I was kind of disappointed um, and his team, uh, you know, fighting and then team objective uh, skills um, and performance there. But Yike was actually really, really good in that regard. Um, and then in the bottom lane, that's an interesting one. Waco and Woody struggled a lot, in my opinion, um, versus Utapon. Um, and the DFM support, I forget, blanking on his name. But I was not impressed with the bottom lane for BS PSG. Um, now, am I impressed with G 2s bottom lane? Um, yeah, I mean, not little, not really, but more than PSGs. Um, I think Han Sama and Mikix, uh, Mickey should have an advantage here over Waco and Woody. So I think that's gonna be you know in favor of G two. So yeah, overall, I guess you can tell like I. I'm a firm believer that G2 kind of has turned around their form um, or at least they're starting to. Um, and I think this is a good matchup for G2 um, to be able to pull this off. Now, PSG definitely has a shot, I think, with Junjia at jungle. I think, you know, he can win any games, really. Like, if he gets a kill early game and help one of his laners to get a kill or an assist... Yeah, I mean, when they're ahead, I mean, he he just knows how to snowball, um, you know, efficiently and then effectively, like, over such a short period. I mean, every two, three minutes you see in the LPL, um, when he used to play for EDG, I mean, you knew that he would snowball. He would have no issue snowballing his, his early game advantage over the counterpart jungler on the other team and then how to, you know, provide – positive uh impact and pressure for the rest of his teammates um i had I, I really had not seen that um even in the series that they played in um two days ago um against dfm i think it was more of an individual and team effort they were just better team fighting team dfm was not as proactive as psg now g2 on the other hand is complete opposite g2 loves to be proactive and loves to be the one who pulls the trigger on make in making those those types of plays and i love teams that do that that are more proactive and that are trying to make things happen and g2 is one of them and but sometimes they can get very tricky and funky and P if psg is ready for the counter jungle or counter plays um, or throwing counter punches yeah i mean psg will be definitely be in a good spot to be able to win um but I just don't, I just didn't see that. I just didn't see that out of PSG. I think PSG is more of a reactive team. I think Junjia really has been the only proactive player um, in that series. I think Yubao at some point, he, he, he was proactive, but only after he was provided with some early game advantage 
with the help and support of Junjia and then Woody um, roaming. So I think, like I said, um, G2 is going to win. That's a long way of saying that I think G2 is going to win, um, but I'm definitely going to have a sprinkle of PSG. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all I got, but I think this kill upside and this matchup is really good. Um, I think G2 loves to team fight and PSG is more bloody than Golden Guardians in that other matchup against BLG. So I do think this is going to produce more kills and this is the game that I will probably target uh, the long stack um, with kill upside here to uh, here tomorrow morning. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or any other suggestions um, for the video content. Um, but until then, Hope you guys uh, have a good night tonight and then hopefully a good morning if you're watching it in the morning. Um, good luck out there and make some money. Um, if you like my video, please, please hit the like button below. And yeah, good luck. Good luck, everybody. Bye-bye.